neuroendocrine tumors tend to present in a very non-specific way. Uh, so they mimic other conditions. So they can mimic chest infections, uh, uh, breathing problems. They can present with blood in your sputum. Um, and so often they don't have a signature way of presenting. If they are peripherally located, so they're located on the edges of your lung, uh, they may even be asymptomatic and so therefore found by incidental CT scans and chest x-rays. Centrally located tumours, so tumours near the big breathing vessels, um, uh, tend to be the typical carcinoids and they tend to present with obstructive symptoms which, are, uh, which give us a, a clue as to something might be wrong in a person and therefore these patients can be discovered faster uh, than those that present with non-specific conditions. Part of the problem with presenting with non-specific conditions uh, is that these patients may well present late uh, and because they present late there can be a limit to the possibility of curative surgical resection and that certainly does impact on the patient's survival. It's as well to remember that these patients also present with syndromes, and these syndromes can be signature syndromes of this condition. And although there are many uh, syndromes, the one to focus on is the one that I've, I've outlined in red, carcinoid syndrome. So all neuroendocrine tumors, whether they are of lung or pancreas or bowel, can present with uh, this particular syndrome. And it's associated with flushing, diarrhea and leaky heart valves, which can lead to wheezing. In lung neuroendocrine tumours, so the atypical and the typical carcinoids, they present, uh, this particular syndrome only presents in one to 5% of cases. So it's not very common, but often is much more severe than if it presented in a pancreatic uh, uh, neuroendocrine tumour or a small bowel neuroendocrine tumour. 